Okay, so I have finally decided to pull my weight and do another video. Um, so uh, a third part to this series of A Day in the Life of a Rugby Player in Spain. Uh, but given all the messages that have come through, I've decided to address them in this video because a lot of you guys were asking, how did you become a professional rugby player in Spain? Um, so in this video, I'm going to highlight seven steps that I took in the lead up to my year in Spain. What it is that you need to do to secure for yourself a club in Spain or uh, or abroad somewhere. And if you are deciding to go in and play rugby abroad, particularly in Spain, uh, this is the video for you and hopefully these steps, if you follow them, will give you the best chance of uh, securing that contract somewhere. Okay, so first step, identify the country that you think you'd like to play in. You need to be thinking about the language of the country, the culture of the country, and just the general experience that you think you'll gain from playing in this country. So for me, I would love to go away and play in a Spanish-speaking country so that I can go away and improve my Spanish. So from here I thought, okay, Argentina, that's the best known Spanish speaking country, wanted something close to home, which is why I then thought about Spain. So Spain for me, I didn't really know much about playing rugby in Spain. Uh, in fact, I know particularly nothing at all. Our first thought you think, Spanish rugby? You know, you haven't really heard of it. Spain sevens team is probably the biggest thing that you've heard of when it comes to Spanish rugby. So from there I thought, okay, Spain 15s, let's learn a little bit more about this. So I went away and, and did a bit of research. Second step is identify the league you want to play in within this country. Wherever your playing ability fits, you need to try and find a good fit for uh, the league that you want to play in. So for me, I chose the Division d'Honneur A, given that was the best league that I thought I could better myself in, but also it was the best league I feel that was well suited to my previous playing experience. And with this uh, and with everything, it's, it's worth doing your research, having a look at each different league within the country. So once you've chosen your league, you need to now identify the clubs within that league and whereabouts they're situated and which one you think will be best for you. Traditionally, there are four main rugby playing regions within Spain. You have the city of Madrid, the city of Valladolid, Catalonia, and the Basque region. Definitely worth weighing up your options within, within those regions, but there are recent emergence from um, uh, Valencia and Andalusia. Frankly, I don't know whether I'm on holiday or playing rugby, so a um, bit confusing. But the views are absolutely stunning. You've got people running on the beach here. Um, bars and, and, and tapas places are just starting to open up now. It's a bit surreal to be honest because I was supposed to be here playing rugby in grueling, muddy weather. Um, and it just doesn't quite feel the same as, as playing Scunthorpe away. Um, so yeah, not too shabby. So for me, I thought I'd love to be in a city. Madrid obviously sparked my interest initially. Madrid, I thought it would give me the best experience. You know, you've got social life there, you've got universities there, lots of people that would be similar minded and similar aged to myself. So I, I thought Madrid would be the best place to have the best overall experience uh, when playing rugby and just living in general. Okay, so now you've chosen the country that you want to play in, the league that you want to play in, and the club that you think you'd best like to be able to play for. Um, but have a ranking system with the club, you know, first, second, thirds, which one you think would be best. So from here, you're now looking to network. I'm a firm believer that networking is so crucial with any industry you end up in. I suggest you really reach out to anyone. So we're talking asking your contact, your rugby coaches, past or present, even asking family and friends to see if they have any contacts um, that they have uh, within the country that you're looking to play in. Platforms you can use, LinkedIn, Facebook, club websites, any social media. So once you've got in touch with your contacts at the club or, or within the country, you need to then start sharing your rugby CV and rugby highlights video. Now, if you haven't created these, I'd highly suggest you go away and do this. So by rugby CV, I mean exactly similar to your job CV. You have the clubs that you play for and, you know, references as well from previous rugby coaches, perhaps a few couple of photos on there. And on that rugby CV, then you have a link to your rugby highlights video as well on that page. You can then be sent off and, and passed around anywhere. So the idea is that once it's on any digital platform, that can then be shared around. 
Now, in your Rugby Highlights video, if, you, if you're not particularly any good at editing, just stick to the basics, stick to your, your iMovie or, or, or whatever. The most important thing is just have some footage that coaches or anyone can look at, look at that and go, okay, this guy's better suited to our club. Uh, let's, let's have a look at him, let's speak to him. So, Rugby CV and Rugby Highlights video, I definitely suggest pass around and share with your contacts once you've started networking. <laughs>so you've now got to the stage where you're in communication with one of the coaches, director of rugby or perhaps the, the captain at the club. So if they're interested, they'll express their interest by offering you a contract. Before going into negotiations, you need to research what other players are on. You need to understand that market space as in depth as you can, because you don't want to be coming in to the negotiating table and go, I want this amount of money. And actually it's far too much for what other people are getting. So this can be done by just having a chat with some of the players that are already there. It definitely helps if you've got a little bit of business experience up your sleeve when it comes to negotiating. Now it's time to select your club. Here you need to complete the paperwork, and by the paperwork I mean obviously the contract, the playing contract, I'm also talking about getting yourself a visa if you need to, if that's applicable, and also completing things like the FER transfer, which you'll have to speak to your current uh, admin officer at, at your current club if you need to, and more about that. Um, but also buying things like travel insurance and, and, and flights and so on, along with further logistics, book your accommodation, and finding yourself a car if, if that's needed. <laughs> I would say now it's time to sort of put your feet up and, 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 and enjoy looking forward to what's to come. However, you need to hit that pre-season hard. Get in that gym, keep your skills up, eat well, keep fit just in general. Do what you need to do to, to, to hit the ground running when you actually uh, step into that field for pre-season when you get out there. Hopefully these steps have proved useful in showing you how exactly I went about playing rugby in Spain. Now, any other questions, please do feel free to, to reach out, uh, whether that's in the comments section of this video uh, or on my social media. Otherwise, um, I hope to see you in the next video and thank you very much for listening.